Good morning everyone. Today we will be talking about interpretation of arterial blood gas that is interpretation of AVG. The content in of this topic are terminology, indication, sampling precaution, AVG interpretation, AVG interpretation in the term of oxygenation, ventilation and acid waste balance. First of all, terminology, PS. The normal arterial PS ranges from 7.36 to 7.44 which corresponds to as per of 44 to 36 nano equivalent per liter. Acidemia is defined as an arterial pH of less than 7.36 which corresponds to as plus of greater than 44 nano equivalent per liter. The acidemia occurs as a primary elevation in pCO2, a fall in bicarbonate or both. Alkalemia is defined as the arterial pH greater than 7.44 which corresponds to as plus of less than 36 nano equivalent per liter. A primary increase in bicarbonate or a fall in carbon dioxide or both occurs in alkalemia. Simple acid based disorder or primary acid based disorder is a single primary process of acidemia, acidosis or alkalosis due to initial change in carbon dioxide or bicarbonate. Likely, compensation means the normal response of a respiratory system or kidney to change in pH induced by primary acid based disorder. Mixed acid-based disorder means the presence of more than one acid-based disorder simultaneously. The indication of ABG as such, uh, the, there is no clear guideline when ABG is indicated. This should be guided by clinical circumstances. In general, we often do ABG on ISO admission, following endo endotracheal intubation, respiratory failure, acid-based disorder, or undergoing permissive hypoventilation. Before sampling for ABG, we should always perform LN test. LN test is performed by occluding radial and ulnar artery by compressing them at patient wrist with middle and index finger of both hand and four fingers. While performing arteries, while both arteries are still occluded, the fist is uncleansed, the palmar surface of the hand should be blanched. The release of compression of ulnar artery, it is normal for the palmar surface to flush within five seconds. Prolonged delay before flossing indicates decreased ulnar artery flow. Red arteries lacking collateral ulnar separation should be avoided at the puncture, this puncture site if possible. Then if a radial artery is unsuitable as a puncture site, you should go for dorsal spadish artery followed by posterior tibial artery. Femoral artery puncture are performed only in case of emergency situation in children and neighbor in neonates. Dorsal spadial artery, the forefeet is elevated and both the dorsal spadial and posterior tibial artery are compressed. Pressure is released from the artery that will not be punctured and the nail bed or uh, and the sole of the foot. The nail bed and the sole of the foot are assessed for return of blood flow which would confirm the collateral circulation. The arteries which has got collateral circulation, that arteries are only punctured during ABG. Before sampling, the precautions we have to take before sampling. First of all, there should be a steady state. The patient should retain a steady state during clinical course, especially to allow the arterial and alveolar gas to equilibrate. Then comes anticoagulant. 0.05 ml heparin should be uh, used as anticoagulant for 1 ml of blood. This is usually done by 3 ml syringe, that is 22 gauge needle, and 1 to 2 ml of blood is taken. Delay in processing of sample as soon as possible. That is, after we take out a ABG sample, we should do ABG. If there is a delay of greater than 20 minutes, ice samples are preferred. And ice, in ice sample, we can do up to 2 hours. More delay, if there is more delay, then is oxygen consumed, conductor is produced, lactose regeneration occurs, which leads to fallacies in our ABG. Venous sampling. A venous sampling, if the sample is venous, then we can know this because there will be no pulsatile filling, there will lack flash of blood, SpO2 that is saturation, uh, what we measure uh, by oximeter is greater than saturation that is measured in ABG. Low PaO2, high PaCO2, the, the, the sample is not clinically correlating. In case of PPG, if the sample is PPG, the pH change will, will be very minimum, that is less, it decreases by 0.04. The pCO2 increases by 8 mm Hg. HCO3 increases by 2 mL. Here we can see one thing, in this 
Hypotension. If there is hypotension, then we should forcefully uh, like uh, spread the um, blood, which will, which will false give falsely low PaO2. Hyperventilation in case of anxiety, pain might alter the baseline in our sample. Leukocytosis. Whenever there is leukocytosis, PaO2 and pH declines due to consumption. PaCO2 will be elevated. There will be cellular consumption. Hypothermia. Whenever the sample we take has got temperature of less than 37 degrees centigrade, then there is a significant change. That is, we should decrease the PaO2 by 5 mm Hg for every degree centigrade decrease, uh, decrease in temperature. Or uh, we should decrease the PaCO2 by 2 mm Hg, 2 mm Hg for every degree change in this our temperature. And PS should increase by 0 0.01. 0 0.01. 0 0.012. FG sampling and FG analysis is done in case in three heading individual ventilation, oxygenation, and extra base balance. First of all, analysis of ventilation. Analysis of ventilation. PaCO2 is given by the ratio of there will be PCO2, the constant K, and PA. This PA means the portion of total ventilation that participates in the gas exchange with pulmonary blood. That is the portion of total ventilation that participate in gas exchange with the pulmonary blood. And PaCO2 is the production of this PCO2 is the produced carbon dioxide. Okay, and K is a constant. In a steady state portion, this produced carbon dioxide is constant. K is always a constant. So PaCO2 is inversely proportional to our this PA. That means ventilation. So whenever this uh, hypercapnia occur that is a uh, p co2 is more than 45 then this means hypoventilation if p co2 is less than 35 that is hypocapnia then there is hyperventilation due to inverse proportional ratio <coughs> in this sample we can see the p co2 is 24.8 this means the p co2 is decreased so this means there is hyperventilation now talking about oxygenation now talking about oxygenation oxygenation is discussed in the topic of uh, like a gradient oxygen content po2 by fi2 ratio in alveolar arterial alveolar oxygen tension ratio first of all a gradient a gradient means this big a means this part this is partial pressure of oxygen alveolar gas this is given by a formula pao2 is equal to PiO2 that is inspired oxygen minus PaCO2 divided by R. This R is the respiratory question because we cannot, we have got nothing to measure our arterial go inside our alveoli and measure our uh, oxygen content. We have to rely in this formula. After uh, after measuring of the PiO2 that is inspired oxygen, we would, uh, subtract this with the carbon dioxide PO, PaCO2 of the that is measured in our ABG and divided by respiratory quotient now p a small a o2 p a small a o2 means it's a partial pressure of oxygen in the blood okay this is given by a formula of f i o2 into 5 or 101 109 minus 0 0.4 times age p o2 is dependent on age f i o2 and p atmosphere now if according to p a o2 our there is something called hypoxemia hypoxemia is means there is a decreased partial pressure of oxygen in the blood this uh, this is categorized into three different subheading like mild hypoxemia of 79 to 60, hyp moderate hypoxemia of 45 to 59, and severe of less than 45 mm Hg. Looking at this ABG, here we can see our PaO2 of 100.7. 100.7 means greater than 80, that is normal. Now PaO2 is 63.3. This means 79. Uh, this uh, this falls in our mild hypoxemia criteria. Now type of hypoxia. 
टाइप ऑफ हाइपोक्सिया मीन हाइपोक्सिया इज लो टिश्यू ऑक्सीजन लो टिश्यू परफ्यूजन दिस कैन मीन दिस इज कैटेगराइज्ड इनटू फोर डिफरेंट हेडिंग हाइपोक्सिक हाइपोक्सिया एनीमिक हाइपोक्सिया सर्कुलेटरी हाइपोक्सिया एंड हिस्टोटोपिक हाइपोक्सिया 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 इज ड्यू टू लो ब्लड पी ओ टू ओके दिस इज सीन एग्जाम्पल इन केस ड्यू टू लॉन्ग डिजीज प्रोसेस एनीमिक हाइपोक्सिया इज इन एडुकेट ऑक्सीजन डेलीवर टू द टिश्यू इज अकर्स इन एनीमिया और कार्बन मोनऑक्साइड पॉइजनिंग सर्कुलेटरी हाइपोक्सिया इज इन एडुकेट ब्लड फ्लो टू द टिश्यू इज सीन इन शॉक हिस्टोटॉक्सिक हाइपोक्सिया इज इन एबिलिटी ऑफ द टिश्यू टू यूज द ऑक्सीजन इज क्लासिकल इज सीन इन साइनाइट पॉइजनिंग दिस आर द फोर टाइप ऑफ हाइपोक्सिया Now talking about oxygen content. Oxygen content is given by a formula of 1.34 multiplied by hemoglobin, and which is also multiplied by saturation of oxygen. Uh, and it's with added uh, PO2 is, uh, into 0.03 mL. This gives the total oxygen content. Here we can see the our ABC gives PO2, SO2, and hematocrit. From this we can know the oxygen content in our blood. Alveolar atrial difference A gradient A gradient is normally less than fifteen. Uh, less than fifteen. Uh, there are from A gradient we have, we can know two type of respiratory failure. There is oxygen oxygenation failure, also known as type one respiratory failure, and ventilatory failure, also known as type two respiratory failure. In oxygen failure, uh, failure we can, we can see in the, in the example over here, PO two is one fifty. Normally PO two is one fifty. Uh, the PCO two measured in this patient. P CO2 of 40 and P alveolar uh, we can calculate from the previous formula uh, P O2 minus carbon dioxide by respiratory coefficient. This uh, this comes to 100 and uh, P O2 measured in the blood is 45. So uh, if we subtract this alveolar from atrial, uh, then it comes 55. Okay, from uh, this uh, difference is 55. Okay, so there is more difference. So there is failure in oxygenation, oxygenation of the blood. Uh, up to alveoli it is fine, but after that it cannot oxygenate. It can oxygenate the blood. So this is oxygenation, oxygenation failure, also known as type one respiratory failure. Over here in our right side, we can see ventilator no, failure. Ventilator failure. Over here we can see ventilator failure. Ventilator failure. The PO2, PiO2 is 150. PCO2 measured in blood is 80. And alveolar alveolar oxygen we can measure we calculate 150 minus 80 by 0.8 means 50. Over here we can see the PO2 PO2 measure in blood is 45. So the difference of alveolar to atrial is 5. So their difference is normal. This A A A difference is normal, but there is our PO2 is low. So PO2 low, but A difference is normal. This means there is defect in ventilation. Is not oxygenation. It is ventilation. Ventilation. This is a type two respiratory failure. In here, we can see the A gradient of thirty four point six. Thirty four point six means A gradient increased. A gradient is increased in case of our uh, defect in oxygenation or type one respiratory failure. Hypoxemia. Hypoxemia. Whenever we get a hypoxemia, we have to evaluate that. Hypoxemia means less than eighty mm of CO two. After that, we have to see if P CO two P A CO two increased or not. Whenever if P A C O two is increased, then we have uh, this due to hypoventilation. I have already told P A C O two is inversely proportional to ventilation. So this is hypoventilation. After hypoventilation, we have to know uh, it is only due to hypoventilation or any other mechanism is there. For this, we have to know A A gradient. Okay, if A A gradient is our normal, then it is only due to hypoventilation defect. That is seen in respiratory decreased respiratory drive, neuromuscular disease. Okay, if the A gradient is increased, then it is hypoventilation plus any other mechanism. We'll see here. Okay, like here we can see from this we have to go here. Okay, if P A O two this gradient increase, then uh, then I will come bit later over here. From if hypoxemia is here and along with hypoxia, this P C O two is increased, then we have to go over here. If PO2 is not increased, then we will see gradient. Okay, gradient of A gradient. Okay, if A gradient is increased, if A gradient is increased, then we have to see if that uh, PO2, the hypoxemia, is corrected by addition of oxygen or oxygenation or not. Okay, if P 
if it is correctable by oxygen then it is due to vacuum mismatch like uh, this is vacuum mismatch seen in case of airway, airway disease interstitial lung disease alveolar disease pulmonary vascular disease but if this a gradient different hypoxia with no increase in psu2 but a gradient is increased uh, which is not corrected by addition of oxygen then this is a sound problem like alveolar collapse into alveolar filling pulmonary embolism okay after this if there is hypoxia psu2 is not increased not increased and appear this gradient is not gradient also is not increased then it will decrease in fried oxygen obviously if we have decrease in fried oxygen then the po2 will be less there won't be increased po2 or the gradient won't be increased after this uh, this is abg showing a po2 of 63.3 uh, means there is our um, there is mild hypoxia uh, or hypoxemia mild hypoxemia and a gradient is increased so if a gradient is increased okay a gradient increase we have we like we'll see here we can see the psu2 psu2 is not increased a po2 is low hypoxia is there psu2 is not increased so uh, not increased and a gradient is increased so here we give addition oxygen we'll see if this is corrected or not and if this is uh, corrected this is vq uh, vq mismatch if this is not corrected then this is a sound problem now this determination of PO2 by FiO2 okay PO2 by FiO2 ratio have to help us uh, to know if the patient has got acute lung injury or not if there is ADS or not okay PO2 FiO2 ratio of greater than 300 is normal less than 300 indicates acute lung injury and while less than 20 indicate less than sorry less than 200 indicates our ARDS ARDS needs other criteria like this is a criteria for ARDS there should be acute onset that is less than seven days there should be hypoxemia okay uh, and if there there should be diffuse bilateral pulmonary infiltrate on frontal chest radiograph considered pulmonary edema infiltrate can be patchy or and or asymptomatic absence of left lateral hypertension based upon clinical assessment or pulmonary capillary waste pressure less than 18 mm of hg if measure okay fio2 measurement of fio2 is a bit cumbersome in case of like sorry fio2 normally the fracture of inspired oxygen uh, for a normal like in our normal roomy year is 21 percent okay 21 percent but if you have given additional oxygen via nasal cannula or simple marks or any other thing then if i have to it changes okay nasal cannula uh, for nasal cannula uh, we can give one to six liter but uh, practically we give up to four liter and this if I have to uh, this changes for approximately four per liter of flow okay this means if I have to we have to add if if, if we need to calculate in case of ABG if, if I have to we have to input in our ABG machine okay uh, for the for input if I have to we have to keep 21 percent if we if we are giving um, our patient with uh, oxygen via natural cannula this 21 percent plus four percent okay four percent for each liter of uh, on this additional oxygen if we are giving 2 liter to the patient 4 into 2 so 4 into 2 is 8 8 plus 21 is 29 the fio2 will comes about around 29 percent and likely in case of simple max there is also 4, 4 liter per uh, 4 per liter of the flow venturi it varies according to the like venturi what percent venturi we are using uh, partial rebreather also the fio2 uh, varies according to flow but we have to remember one thing in in here this fio2 measured by this is a approximate value it's not exact okay um, because while giving via nasal cannula uh, the 21 percent of room here we assume the 21 percent room here and the via nasal cannula also goes simultaneously in equal proportion but practically the ear from the ear the uh, room here won't be in the same proportion to that of our the oxygen which is going via nasal cannula and so uh, here we can see this average report with pao2 by fao2 of 302 it's greater than 300 so it's normal a a tension ratio a tension ratio is this arterial divided by alveolar ratio this normally is greater than 0 0.75 
The significance of AA tension ratio is that this less dependent zone FIO2 compared to AA ratio. As I have just told in the previous slide, this FIO2 varies with different circumstances and different oxygen concentration we provide to the patient. So AA tension ratio is less dependent on FIO2, uh, less dependent on FIO2, so we can know different like parameters from uh, to our patient without variation uh, with FIO2. The, there is one study with prognostic value of AA oxygen tension ratio in acute polymer embolism. The conclusion is the cutoff value of AA, this is AA ratio of less than 0.49, exhibits stability at variable FAO2 value and is a useful prognostic predictor, this predictor in case of acute polymer embolism. So AA, ratio, AA tension ratio also has a prognostic value for acute polymer embolism. Now coming to acid based disorder, for acid based disorder, first thing we have to do is take history and physical examination of the patient. Then we will do the simultaneous ABG and chemistry profile, we will see consistency, primary disorder, compensation and last we will see the gaps in uh, the acid base. Uh, first of all, history and physical examination. Our history and physical examination determines in which direction our acidosis or alkalosis is occurring. For example, in case of pulmonary embolism, we expect the patient to have respiratory alkalosis. Uh, likely, in case of this vomiting, we lose acid from acid while vomiting, so there will be metabolic alkalosis. Uh, likely, in case of this diabetes, diabetic ketoacidosis, we expect metabolic acidosis. So, history and physical examination directs us uh, to in which direction we are going. Now, talking about consistency, uh, the as this bicarbonate given by our uh, ABG report is a is not a major value. It is a calculated value from this Henderson Hasselbach equation. Uh, so we have to see our ABG report is consistent with the bicarbonate provided by our ABG report and that uh, uh, that we send in our laboratory. So uh, in while doing ABG, it is also necessary to send. By converting all the electrolytes, we expect to change in the patient to our laboratory also, and we have to see if that is consistent. The both reports are consistent or not. This is the H plus ion and uh, with corresponding pH, of which we use in this Henderson Hasselbach equation. Now, talking about determination of primary acid-base disorder, primary acid-base disorder, we have to see first of all see pH and by this carbon dioxide. Okay, if carbon dioxide and pH move in opposite direction, there is then this means this primary respiratory component. If pH and pH two look go in the same direction, this primary metabolic component. Okay, in this example over here, we can see pH of seven point two. That is acido. This is acidosis. pH two is our increased. It's going in opposite direction. Opposite direction means this is respiratory acidosis. Okay, this is primary disorder. Now, second determine some secondary response. Secondary response in metabolic acid-base disturbance, there will be respiratory um, compensation. The respiratory develops uh, quickly within hours. In case of persistent respiratory abnormality, the metabolic compensation develops slowly over in the two to five days. Now, primary disorder is respiratory. Generally, if primary respiratory primary disorder is respiratory, uh, we know from history and physical examination whether it is acute component, acute respiratory disorder, or it is a chronic respiratory disorder. But in different circumstances, we can we may might be in uh, like a dilemma if whether it is acute or chronic. In this situation, we can use this formula: P as a change in and this S plus by change in carbon dioxide. If this ratio comes out to be less than 0.3, this is chronic. Okay, if it's greater than 0.8, this is acute, and this 0.3 to 0.8, this is acute and chronic. Both components there. In the talking about example, in a 76 year old male, if SUV for 20 years and increased uh, since four months, swelling of body for four months, he is a chronic smoker, and on respiratory examination, if violator which are present, and the ABG report gives our pH of 7.3. Carbon dioxide of uh, 88, uh, so this PS corresponds to 7.3 corresponds to our mm, here uh, 7.3 corresponds to 50. So 50 change in carbon change in H plus means 50 my, like subtracted by 40 and PSO2 is 88. Okay, 88 subtracted by normal of 40. This comes out to a ratio of 0 0.2. 0 0.2 means this is our chronic 
चेंज दिस इज क्रोनिक और रेस्पिरेटरी एसिडोसिस नाइफ्रा इन रेस्पिरेटरी एसिडोसिस द सेकेंडरी मेटाबॉलिक रेस्पॉन्स इज कैलकुलेटेड बाय दिस दिस फॉर एवरी 10 एमएम ऑफ एजी एबो 40 वी इंक्रीज बाय कैलकुलेट बाय 1 व्हाइल इन केस ऑफ क्रोनिक वी इंक्रीज बाय 4 फॉर एवरी 10 एमएम ऑफ एजी एबो 40 ओके इन केस ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी अल्कालोसिस द द चेंज दिस बाय कैलकुलेट इज डिक्रीज बाय 2 एम 2 मिलीमोल व्हाइल इन केस ऑफ क्रोनिक दिस इज डिक्रीज बाय 4 विद एवरी 10 मिलीमोल इन uh, the 10 sorry 10 mm hg below 40 mm hg now talking about metabolic acidosis the secondary response is calculated by winter's formula 1.5 times bicarbonate plus 8 plus minus 2 or by another formula of bicarbonate plus 15 the complete secondary adaptive response takes 12 to 24 hours metabolic alkalosis uh, the secondary response is pso2 of 0.7 times bicarbonate minus 24 plus 40 plus minus 2 in uh, another formula also for uh, bicarbonate plus 15 or we can another formula of 0.7 times bicarbonate plus 20 this secondary adaptive response takes for 24 to 36 hours to occur this chart summarizes all the compensation we have to calculate that is secondary uh, compensation in case of metabolic acidosis we use winter's formula in case of metabolic alkalosis like uh, pco2 will increase by 0.75 respiratory acidosis this is alkalosis the in acute 0.2 chronic 0.4 respiratory acidosis change by 0.1 respiratory acidosis the ps this bicarbonate increase by 0.4 now superimposed acidosis or alkalosis may be diagnosed okay sometimes they can be superimposed like both uh, respiratory and metabolic thing, thing can be there okay it's calculated uh, if the calculated response sorry if the calculated response is greater or less than predicted value okay in case of our uh, if PSU is too low okay there is concomitant respiratory alkalosis okay if PSU is too high then there is concomitant respiratory acidosis okay and likely if pycarbonate is too high then there is concomitant there is concomitant metabolic this sorry this is metabolic okay? this concomitant metabolic alkalosis while pycarbonate is too low it's concomitant metabolic acidosis Com this compensatory response return the ps towards normal range but does not completely normalize the ps okay now talking about mixed equation disorder sometimes okay sometimes this mixed disorder make us in uh, so much of dilemma which uh, where we do not know which is the primary component okay if we don't know primary component it, and we if we need to know the com primary component then we can use this formula of change in bicarbonate by bicarbonate or and change in pso2 pso2 by pso2 okay whichever this whether this comes to be the higher or this comes to be higher whichever comes to be higher then that is the primary component in case of mixed disorder now talking about the gaps there are three gaps like anion gap delta gap and osmolar gap okay anion gap is calculated by the total serum cation this is that is uh, the, always there will be like a total a serum cation is called to serum anion but there are some unmeasured cations and unmeasured anions okay if we subtract sodium minus bicarbonate plus chloride this is anion gap this anion gap means the unmeasured uh, anion minus unmeasured cation uh, if there is cross chain albumin then we have to like calculate by uh, observed anion gap plus 2.5 multiplied by 4.5 subtracted by albumin okay if so for example if the albumin of the patient is 35 and is 35 or 3.5 then uh, this uh, this subtracted value comes out to be 1 so we have to add 2.5 in our observed anion, anion gap okay observed anion gap then delta delta ratio this uh, delta delta ratio is anion gap is equal to uh, delta anion gap is equal to major anion, anion gap minus normal anion gap okay in change in bicarbonate means normal anion gap minus measured bicarbonate okay if this delta delta ratio okay this if by anion gap is equal to bicarbonate then there is pure high anion gap metabolic our acidosis if it change this bike anion gap is more than bicarbonate then this is due to um, this is due to associated metabolic alkalosis okay now likely 
this out change in anion gap is less than bicarbonate then this is there is associated non anion gap metabolic acidosis here you can see like uh, anion gap if anion gap is more than bicarbonate so there should be something which have to uh, which need to be uh, there the by this there should be metabolic alkalosis okay the amount of amount by which anion gap increases typically approximates the amount by which the serum bicarbonate degrees this means uh, if anion gap it changes uh, this change in anion gap is like 5 then bicarbonate should also decrease by 5 okay approximately for even this uh, to become pure high anion gap metabolic acidosis a smaller gap a smaller gap is calculated by measured minus calculated osmolarity the normally it's less than 10 we can they, we calculate the anion gap by this formula 2 times sodium plus glucose by 18 plus BUN by 2.8 if there is increased osmolar gap this means there is something which have to which has increased osmo, osmolarity okay this means ethanol isopropyl alcohol or methanol uh, glycine mannitol or glycerol and ethylene glycol this means something which increases our osmolarity uh, talking about urine anion gap urine anion gap is the formula urine gap is a bit difference uh, urine anion gap is equal to sodium plus potassium minus mm, minus chloride okay sodium plus potassium minus chloride in state of acidosis the kidney normally increases the ammonia production to allow enhanced excretion of the acid load okay in acid load higher urine ammonium concentration is balanced by higher chloride level thus with approximately high ammonium in the urine the urine anion gap become negative because the chloride concentration exceed sodium plus potassium if urine urinary acidification is inadequate due to renal tubular acidosis the urine ammonium level remains low and the urine anion gap remains positive urine anion gap if there is positive urine anion gap okay if there is positive anion gap it means there it means there is failure of kidney to generate by this ammonium okay this occurs in distal or hypoaldosterone uh, or hypoaldosterone uh, type of rta in early renal failure also if urine anion gap is negative this means the increase in bicarbonate excretion is appropriate uh, is appropriate uh, that means that there is appropriate renal response to acidemia this occur in case of proximal renal tubular acidosis or ingestion or di this dilutional uh, causes this uh, chart summarizes the metabolic acidosis okay uh, metabolic whenever there is metabolic acidosis we have to like no whether the anion gap is increased or not okay uh, whenever this increase anion gap okay uh, we have to calculate uh, if this is due to any other causes like uh, if there is increased ketones in case of our decay alcoholic ketosis starvation uh, in case of if there is no ketones we have to look for any other thing which increases our uh, this anion which increases our anion gap like lactic acid in case of lactic acid lactate increases in case of uremia in case of renal failure or we have to look if no cause is found we have to look for toxic screen also okay ingestion of toxins okay like ethanol methanol ethylene glycol provided glycol it keeps the os og this osmo this osmolarity gap of greater than 20 greater than 10 if og the osmolar gap is less than 10 this due to salicylate or 5 oxy proline urea while in case of non anion gap metabolic acidosis if there is non anion gap metabolic acidosis then we have to calculate the urine anion gap if urine anion gap is positive then we have to look if there is clinical history is suggestive of gi or gi causes or uh, the suggestive of any kidney causes okay if gi causes then there can be di diarrhea fistula intestinal dilutional or uh, this dilutional uh, dilutional post hypocalcemia um, but if there is our uh, positive anion gap then uh, we have to look for renal causes like early renal failure and we have to determine if there is a type 4 respiratory failure this rt or like uh, type 1 type or type 2 rt okay and uh, in type 4 rt there is hyperkalemia okay uh, while in if there is hypokalemia then it can be type 1 or type 2 okay this is this is differentiated by urine ph if urine ph is greater than 4 this 5.3 then that is type 1 uh, or rta if urine ph variable then there can be type 2 rta 
Now talking about base axis and deficit, okay? Base axis or deficit is defined as the amount of acid or base required to be added to whole blood to achieve a pH of 7.4 at 37 degrees centigrade and pH to a 40 mm of Hg. If the base is in excess, if the base is in excess, this may be due to decrease in metabolic acid or may be due to increase in buffer, that is bicarbonate. If the base is in deficit, then this may be due to excess metabolic acid. Okay. In summary, while uh, after doing ABG, we have to know if the ABG is authentic or not. Okay. Uh, by like checking the constituency of the bicarbonate in our lab as well as in the ABG. The uh, well, then next step is we have to look at this acidic that is acidemia or alkalemia. Okay, and if then uh, after acidity and alkalemia, we have to know a primary component is respiratory metabolic or mixed. Or and after that, if respiratory, then it's whether it is ecuador chronic, a metabolic, we have to calculate anion gap and delta gap. And uh, after primary component, we have to calculate the compensation if it is adequate or not. Okay, then we have to know, we have to look for a ventilation status as a hypermentalism or a hyperventilation. Then we have to look for oxygenation status by A gradient, A by a tension ratio. PO to by FIO to ratio and total oxygen content. Thank you this much for today.